Harry's Wife, Part 103.24 Backlash? I've no regrets. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to educate you about narcissism. Harry's Wife is an excellent vehicle to enable me to do so. She shows so many facets of the behaviour of a narcissist and, of course, is never out of the news for one reason or another. And many of you are interested in her. Of course, there are those of you that are interested in understanding her narcissism. Others of you are just interested in understanding her behaviour, whereas others just can't stand her and relish my sardonic observations about her behaviour. But if you belong to that latter group, I would encourage you to access more of my work to enable you to understand more about her behaviour and those of others. This information may well prove life-saving or livelihood-saving at some point. Those who've accessed my other work and have consulted with me will attest to that. One thing that often perplexes people is the capacity for the narcissist to be such a hypocrite and not see it. The fact that the narcissist engages in contrarian behaviours and doesn't see it. You see, if the narcissist were able to see those contrarian behaviours and see the hypocrisy, it would give them pause. They would hesitate. They would stall. They wouldn't be as effective at getting what they need, i.e. the prime aims. So as a matter of logic, the narcissism with an unaware narcissist must ensure that they cannot see their contrary behaviours, or their hypocrisies. Even where it's pointed out to them, intellectually they may understand what you're saying, but their narcissism will not allow them to absorb it, causing them to deny what you're sulking about, deflect, or use some alternative manipulation in order to nullify the threat to control that you're posing by drawing a comparison between the two behaviours. You said this yesterday, and now you've said this today. That is a glaring contradiction. The narcissist, where mid-range, can see that you're drawing attention to a contradiction, understands that's what you're suggesting, but cannot accept it. In limited circumstances, the narcissist might say, yes, I can see how that doesn't go together, and then they'll follow an excuse. In other instances, it can be dealt with very simply, I didn't say that yesterday, and it's denied, and it's a genuine denial, because immediately the narcissism revises history, to cause what was said yesterday to be deleted from the record, save as for when it needs to be resurrected. The narcissist can do this with a breathtakingly short period of time. A narcissist can literally say one thing a second ago, and then now deny it. And you would think, seriously, how can they deny what they've just said? But a narcissist will. An unaware narcissist does so because the narcissism compels it in order to nullify the threat to control that you pose. And it has to be immediate. It has to be fast. As you know, Harry's wife is a mid-range narcissist, and she regularly engages in hypocritical behaviour. And what, of course, is inter interesting and entertaining is that more and more of her hypocrisies are coming to the fore as a combination of those that hitherto might have remained silent are now speaking out about her, and more and more people are seeing through her, and therefore are almost waiting for more of these contradictions and hypocrisies to appear so they can be showcased and highlighted. And accordingly, her poor behaviours, her stupidity, her ridiculous observations are seized upon, highlighted, showcased, drawn attention to. And we know that Harry's wife, despite her protestations to the contrary, scrutinises what's in the press, what's in social media, because her narcissism brings her to do so. She has to know. She needs to know, because that's part of the assertion of control. And in an article by Meredith Nardino from US Magazine, or Us Magazine, I think it's uh, Us Weekly, states, Harry's wife thinks backlash over deal or no deal comments is extremely disappointing. She doesn't regret it. Rising above, Harry's wife doesn't regret speaking up about her experience on deal or no deal. A source exclusively reveals in the new issue of Us Weekly. The Duchess of Sussex, <clears throat> 41, 
recently recalled what it was like to be one of the briefcase girls on the NBC game show, alleging on her Archetypes podcast that she felt like the job reduced her to a bimbo. Her comments quickly raised eyebrows. But the suit's alum is choosing to take the high road. Now, as you know, her comments were roundly slaughtered. Why? First of all, she consented to going on to the show. So you knew what you were getting yourself in for. You knew the gig. Secondly, other briefcase girls have turned around and said it actually wasn't like that. So she's lying. It's a revision of history, in effect. Other people have pointed out that, of course, all you're doing is trying to undo what you've done in the past because it doesn't fit with the narrative that you're engaging in now. But if you're going to do that, Harry's wife, then you also need to try and explain why you simulated sucking somebody off in a car in Beverly Hills 90210, why you repeatedly appeared in your skimpies in suits, why there are pictures of you with your more or less flat chest out in the sunshine with some other people wearing bikinis. You also have to explain why you regularly pose and tart around being objectified wearing designer clothing. If you want to change the narrative of your past, you've got fucking lots to deal with because you have repeatedly allowed yourself to be objectified. Indeed, as you flipped those burgers for men health, you chose to do that because at the time your narcissism dictated that that was the appropriate thing to do to advance your career. And now you've married a prince of a realm and you're trying to reinvent yourself as fun, cuddly, silly Harry's wife, but also a bananatarian who wants to be a politician and is an overwhelming angel fake empath. You want to try and undo all of those things. And it's not washing. So again and again and again and again, people have lambasted her, ridiculed her, and basically said, this is nonsense. All of that is... An, we globally, in aggregate, determine it as a backlash. And because we know that she has regard for what is said about her, all of that is challenge fuel. Lots of fuel, but lots of challenges. All those people on social media pointing out, hang on a second, you consented to this, so how can you complain about it? The briefcase girls coming forward in the mainstream media pointing out it didn't happen like that. People ridiculing her on talk shows, on broadcast news, boom, boom, and the good old Aussies as ever laughing their tits off over her behaviour on their own news channels. Accordingly, this is a huge threat to control, so how does she deal with it? She simply dismisses it. A spokesperson for her stated, This negative backlash is extremely disappointing to Harry's wife, but she's learned a long time ago not to get too cut up or demotivated by those who wish to dwell in negativity, especially over something so trivial as a job she left many years ago. Now, let's pause there. Who brought up her being a briefcase girl? Who brought up the concept of being bimboed? Who brought up the idea of being objectified as a briefcase girl? Who brought up discussing her feelings surrounding being a briefcase girl? Was it you, Mrs. Miggins, from Clacton-on-Sea? No, I don't believe it was you at all. Was it you, Hamish McHamish, in Perth, in Scotland? No, it wasn't you. Was it you, Doug Under, down there in Adelaide in Australia? No, it wasn't. Was it me, the Ultra? No. It was, of course, Harry's wife. And this exemplifies the compartmentalization of her narcissism and the rampant hypocrisy that she regularly exhibits by saying, oh, all of that was very trivial. Well, why did you bring it up then? You evidently didn't think it was trivial because you had to bang on about it. But of course, because you're not that clever and your narcissism is mid-range in variety and focuses in the moment without thinking about what might come next, you created a problem for yourself because your narcissism thought, OK, let's dole out a pity play and also to manage the facade by bringing up the past about being a briefcase girl and then claim, oh, I was objectified as part of talking about yourself on arsy wipes. Of course, 
immediately because the legion of people that don't like you because of your behaviors is getting bigger and bigger and will continue to scrutinize your every action, there's a mass calling out of your behavior across the media. That represents a threat to control. And so your way of dealing with it is to basically say, don't know what you're all getting so worked up about. It was something trivial. It was a job I left years ago, which of course demonstrates the contrary nature and the hypocrisy of her behavior. If it was so trivial, why did you bring it up? Well, you brought it up because your narcissism dictated it need to. And now, because your narcissism dictates that having brought it up is a problem for you, you can quite readily, without any shame or embarrassment, say, what are you all getting so worked up about? If it was a job in the past, it's entirely trivial. And this is an excellent example of the hypocrisy of the narcissist and the way that the narcissist will make a big song and dance about something on Monday and then act like it never happened or just dismiss it as trivial on Tuesday. The article continues, she knows that there are certain critics who will go to great lengths to stir the pot. Actually, they don't need to. You're stirring it very well yourself, you idiot. And call her out as a hypocrite in any way possible. Absolutely. And do you know why we all call you as a hypocrite? Because you are one, and you give us lots of evidence to demonstrate it. The California alum, the article continues, who wed Prince Harry in 2018, doesn't find it fair or easy to deal with criticisms of the public. Well, you really ought to find it easy these days because you're so well-versed in it, because you get so much of it, and it's justified. The source adds, her general response is to shrug her shoulders and say, it is what it is. Third assertion of control by basically dismissing it. Per The Insider, the bench author has said what she wanted to say about the topic and wouldn't take it back. Defiance, stubbornness, sense of entitlement. She's moved on and hopes others can now do the same. Again, this invalidates people, which is a manipulation of the narcissist, by basically saying, I brought it up, I made a song and dance about it, but you're not allowed to make a song and dance about it in terms of criticising my behaviour, and if you do, what's wrong with you? You need to move on, you're obsessed, let it go. Harry's wife worked on Deal or No Deal from 2006 to 2007 before landing the role of Rachel Zane on Suits. During the October 18th episode of her podcast, the activists remembered being lined up backstage before filming began. There were different stations for having your lashes put on or extensions put in or the padding in your bra, she recalled, which has since been demonstrated to be a lie. When I look back at that time, I'll never forget this one detail. There was a woman who ran the show and she'd be there backstage and I can still hear her. She'd go... Markle, suck it in. Markle, suck it in. Harry's wife claimed that she left the series because the environment didn't make her feel valued. And of course, it has since come out, the suggestion that she didn't leave the series, but rather she wasn't taken up again as a consequence of trying to discuss Ugandan affairs with Howie the host. It then mentions how Claudia Jordan, the from Real Housewives of Atlanta, came forward to share her own experience to offer clarity on Harry's wife's perspective. That's one way of putting it. I would say telling the truth of what occurred as opposed to the lies that Harry's wife has put forward. And then days later, a former stylist from the series offered her side of the story. To know me is to know I love my work. It's been a rough week watching a show I love so much be criticised, Dina Caccioni wrote via Instagram. I had the privilege to design looks for Deal or No Deal for all of the women and, of course, at Howie Mandel. It was one of the most challenging, wonderful, high-profile gigs of my career, and I loved every minute of it. She asserted she wouldn't change a thing about her time on Deal or No Deal, adding... Everyone on the show, from my wardrobe team to the producers, the crew, hair and makeup, Howie, and especially the models, all worked so very hard to make the shows the best they could be for the contestants and the deals and the fans who adored it. I'm proud to have been part of the show and the deal, or no deal family, and always will be. And once again, Harry's wife, in order to try and assert control over the threat to control posed by the backlash, makes herself look stupid because nobody's going to believe this explanation. And furthermore, it once again drags up the nonsense that she spouted in the first place. And that just demonstrates the collateral consequences of her form of narcissism. Rather than just staying in a position of withdrawal and saying nothing about it and moving on, she has to broadcast that she's not bothered by it. But we know that she is. We know that it is for two reasons. One, she's a narcissist and a backlash, notwithstanding the fact that she's provided with fuel, threatens her sense of control, and she hates it. And secondly, the very fact that this kind of nonsense is spouted through a spokesperson demonstrates that it's got to her, and that she has to 
publicly broadcast this, I don't care about it. But the very fact that you're saying that demonstrates that you do. It shows just how mid-range her narcissism is. And once again, it demonstrates how it keeps causing these collateral consequences, which are now piling up and stacking up more and more. This is an excellent example of her hypocrisy, her compartmentalization, and moreover, how she does it within barely a week of the points that she made, immediately backtracking and claiming, no, I'm not bothered about it, even though the evidence demonstrates that she was. An excellent example indeed. I'm H.G. Judah. Thank you for listening.